Hey everybody and welcome back to episode number two of the Glamping Resorts Live podcast. I know we had some issues last week with the live portion of it, but we are getting internet figured out. It's not there yet, so if it does fail again today, bear with us. I will post it tomorrow on our YouTube, on our Facebook, we'll promote it on Instagram, and you can go to anchor.fm and search for us if you just want to hear the audio podcast version. Now, before we get to our guest, let's talk about our sponsor. So first sponsor is Glamping Resorts. Now, have you ever thought about starting your own resort? Well, we can help you. So whether you own nothing yet and you're just looking to get started, visit glampingresorts.com, reach out to us, we can give you a hand. Now say you have your own campground already and you're looking to increase occupancy rates, well guess what? Glamping structures can help you do that and we can help you set up those glamping structures. Visit glampingresorts.com, contact us today and learn more. Second sponsor is none other than Element Construction. Now these guys helped us put up our domes, our tents, the walking trails, even the playground at North Shore Resort. They're awesome, they're easy to work with, and they're just all around, I'm gonna say great guys. And you don't have to worry about you know, two, three, four, five years down the road going back and having to fix stuff that you shouldn't have to worry about fixing. Element Construction. Visit them at elementconstruction.ca and you will find out what I mean by how great they are to work with. So next building project, head on over there, elementconstruction.ca. Next up is North Shore Resorts. That's located just off Buffalo Pound Lake on the north side. Now these guys, which is us, I should say, we, we have lakefront, lakeview lots, and lakeview lots to lease. So if you're doing the RV thing and you want somewhere close to Regina, Moose Jaw, where you live, hit us up. We have tons of lots available that are ginormous. 75 by 100 feet is the smallest lot. So check us out. And I mean, we also have the tents, the domes, and you can book those for next season. We were very busy last summer, so get in while you can. Book ahead, book early, get the weekend you want, and don't miss out on your glamping getaway. I should also mention, we have gift cards. So visit glampingresorts.com not only to book, but to purchase a gift card. I mean, Christmas is coming up, so give the gift of glamping. You won't regret it. You'll love it. I'm sure they'll bring you along on the adventure as well. So glampingresorts.com for gift cards to book your domes or to learn about lakefront, lakeview lot sales or leases. Now, this week, our guest. So he's a mortgage broker. He's a real estate agent. And he's also manager of finance as well as sales here at Glamping Resorts. So he's none other than Josh Reese. And we'll get to him right after this intro. All right, and we are live. Josh, welcome. Matt, how's it going? You might have to be a little bit closer to that. Lean in a bit. You'll be good to there? go. That should be just fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. Wonderful. I know you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate you coming on the podcast for the second episode ever yeah. of the Glamping Resorts live podcast. Yeah. So, my first question. You obviously enjoy the outdoors. So, as far as coming to Glamping Resorts, what attracted, to it, attracted you to it? And, I mean, how did you end up with us, I well, guess? It was probably you to begin with. I think I seen one of your videos to start and it drew me out there. So I drove out one day with my girlfriend. Uh, we just wanted to know what the heck was going on out there. So we drove out, we saw the domes. Um, we asked questions to other people that were camping out there as to what they thought was going on as far as camping and amenities and we started asking questions um, we had a closer look at the domes they were very very intriguing so we decided we would go on the website and we would book one um, we did that 
We had a two night stay initially. Um, it was awesome. And during one of those evenings, we had a conversation with Cam, who was your first guest and the owner developer. Yeah, my boss. Um, yeah, so that conversation led to a lunch. Um, being in the real estate industry already as a real estate agent and a mortgage broker um, and an avid camper and looking for somewhere to spend more time in the summers and the springs and the falls. Uh, we decided that I would spend time representing selling and leasing these properties uh, just because it was a, a natural fit. So that's what we decided to do. And now I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, I bet you never saw yourself doing a podcast. <laughs> never. No, you better oh, make geez. me a star. I, I'll do my best. <laughs> well, geez, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that uh, all my ridiculous videos throughout the summer actually uh, did something and people are watching them. Thank you. Appreciate to hear yeah. that. So uh, how did you uh, enjoy the glamping experience out there? Because you stayed in the dome, you said, right? Yeah, the domes are awesome just because, number one, it's something different. Um, that's, that was the big one for me. Um, I might have seen one on the internet somewhere before. I didn't know what it was. Um, so you're in there. It's spacious. It's clean. Um, the bathrooms are awesome. So you can have a nice hot shower. And then the view is amazing because you're overlooking the lake. Um, and it was just a great, great overall experience. I'm glad to hear. So was glamping resorts at North Shore, was that your first glamping experience or have you visited other glamping resorts? No, I mean, glamping, you could, you could call glamping anything that's luxurious camping. So I've spent some time in some decent or very nice RVs before, uh, but never anything to the dome capacity. Yeah, it is interesting, kind of, nobody has an actual term for glamping right now. It's anything from, really, you just need some type of tent and a bed in there. And then a lot of people label that glamping. We yeah. tried to go a step above that. Yeah. So glad you enjoyed it. I think it's anything that is is a step above regular camping, where you're you're pampered a little bit more than you you would be normally. And to, that's what we're trying to do, I think, right? I agree. To me, glamping is anything where you have access to a hot shower and a nice bed. Yeah. I mean, maybe oh, a little bit. And the beds in the domes, they're ten out of ten. Like that, that's likely one of the best, um, beds I've slept in, I think. And I, that's I think an I spent about 3000 on my bed at home. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, actually. So it's an ND mattress that we have in yeah. all our domes and tents. And I actually, uh, went and bought myself one because I liked them so much. You actually. did. Hey? Yeah, I did. Oh, really? Well, there's another story. Yeah. Um, we had a power outage. I think I told you this where, yeah. but for those listeners out there, we had a power outage and during that power outage, my dog decided to pee on our old mattress. So yeah. I couldn't clean it in time and it just really soaked in yeah. and it was like right by my head where I sleep. Yeah. So I had well, that's, to. That's, that's where the salesman should have sold you yeah. a mattress pad and you should, you probably turned it down. Yeah, I did. I was young. <laughs> I bought that when I was in university. I was like, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to pee the bed, but surprise you get dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. Okay. So you obviously, you like the outdoors. Uh, what are some other spots that you would usually go camping? Well, and is it RVing or is it, are you a tenter so or what's your thing? I've done a little bit of both. I've had a pop-up uh, trailer and um, my dad and I shared a pretty large RV for a while. Um, right now that, that one's getting a little expen expensive to fix um, and it's got some years on it. And then as of recent, Courtney and I have done mostly just uh, tenting and we've gone out to Katepwa for the most part and we really like it out there just because there's lots of people. Um, I would say sometimes maybe too many people so that's one of the things you can get a little crowded out there. Um, you know if you go to the beach and I just I just like anywhere where you're by some nice water and by the trees and you can just spend time outdoors that's the main thing because there's a lot of nice places around but you kind of want to find a place that you can make it your own a little bit um you know always always bringing stuff out and finding a new spot um it, you don't always have the time for that on the weekend so that's what i was doing was i was kind of seeking something where you 
can just pick up your 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 backpack and some food and head out and then you have a spot for the entire weekend or the week or maybe even you know the whole season okay i feel that so okay so when you go camping or you go on a holiday getaway especially well we'll talk camping are you a fisherman what do you do do you just go for the sake of relaxing getting away or what you do know you, what, what do you it's do? it's being outside yep. right so sure i would fish and sure i will fish in the future but um it's just about being outside. That's the main thing. A person can be at home and you can be sitting in your backyard, but you know, after two hours you go inside and it's just too easy to do that. Um, it's, it's the environment where you wanna be outside 10, 11, 12 hours a day and you can retreat back for a good sleep and a good meal, but otherwise you're just outside. And that's, that's what's really good about uh, glamping resorts is just sitting outside and by the fire and looking at the stars and having a drink and cooking some food. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. Okay, so when you first pulled up to a resort, because I, I mean, you come in on the road, it's between two fields. What was your first, like, what did you think of the resort when yeah. you first arrived? I, I'm curious, be honest. So that's that's kind of what I like about it each time is you, you're you driving and you come off the highway. Um, there's, a, there's two ways to come out. Um, if you like to stay on on uh, the highway most of the way um, that's the way i kind of prefer and you turn down a dirt road and you're just driving through a farmer's field and it's not very impressive at all and then you come over the horizon and all of a sudden there's a lake and it's beautiful and it opens up and you see campsites and you see rvs and you know you see the the scenery when you come over the hill so it's kind of like under promising and over delivering when you're driving out it's pretty impressive when you do come over that hill yeah i remember uh, my first trip out i thought i was in the wrong place completely then you turn that corner you're like ah okay I yeah here it is this is actually yeah. a resort not just a setup in the middle of a field <laughs> so when i'm showing when i'm showing potential um glampers that want to come out here and they want to you know, either be a seasonal uh, RV site holder or they're looking at purchasing property. Um, I tell them that the drive out is this way, it's this way. And I, I usually expect them to be slightly disappointed as they're driving out because it's, it's really not that scenic. But when you do come over that, that crest, then it's very impressive. And that's, I kind of like that. I kind of almost have that as a surprise for them because of the impressiveness of it when you come over. Yep, yep, yep. So I guess really quickly for people who are listening to this, uh, for those of you who don't know, Josh, he does sell lakefront, lakeview properties and leases for us. Josh, give a quick plug on where they can reach you at as far as if they're interested in any properties. Right, so if you find yourself uh, an outdoors person and you like to be outdoors and you're looking for somewhere to put your RV, and you might want a seasonal site that you can call your own uh, from year to year. Uh, you might want to purchase your RV site or you might want to buy a lakefront lot uh, that we have for sale and you can build a cabin or a cottage or a home. Um, I can answer all those questions for you in addition to how you can finance them um, because we do in-house financing and we've got some really good options there. So all you have to do is visit our website at uh, Glapping Resorts uh, dot com or you can call me directly at 306-209-7483 right, right on all right so tourism aside i mean we've known each other what it's been about three four months now yes about that so i mean since i broke your uh, uh camera yeah that, that, that was my pictures yeah of yeah it was an <laughs> impromptu headshot and i didn't have my sandbags with me yeah. It was day, the moment umbrellas. that he decided to not use his sandbag, and I, I didn't have any with me. Was the oh, issue, yeah, so yeah. I, I borrowed him out that day, and things happen. I'm it was just trying to forget. It was the calmest of days, and then a little wisp of wind came over and blew it over. And yeah, I could see your pissed off. I, I was just like, "Oh come on, yeah, I that's okay. That. Got a new umbrella. We're all happy. Yeah, it's fine. Things happen. We move on. All right. So, just tourism aside and stuff. I mean. Knowing you, you're a pretty well-rounded guy. So, I mean, what other interests do you have besides outdoor, camping, all that stuff? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, 
as the years go by and you get older, you you simplify a little bit. So um, a person spends a lot of time working. So when you're not working, you just want something simple to do. And uh, in Saskatchewan, I think we got some really beautiful spots um, to spend time outside. And and for me, I've tried to embrace the winters a little bit more. I hated them for so many years, but then after a while, you realize that you're not going anywhere anytime soon until you you win the lottery or hit it big. So you have to, you got to say, okay, well, here's where I'm going to be. I'm going to embrace the winter. And so I've done a bit of snowmobiling. I'll do a lot more this year. Um, and just, again, anything that keeps me outside um, when I can be. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Um, I don't do much snowmobiling, but are you like Articats, Skidoo, Polaris? What's your... So, yeah, me and a friend, um, what did we, what were we using last year? Um, it was pretty sure it was um, Polaris. And I don't know why I would choose one over the other. Some guys just say that some are reliable uh, some are easier to work on because um, you you know you don't want to go spend fifteen thousand dollars on one right Skidoos off the bat. are expensive snowmobiles yeah. yeah so you got to ease into it right you gotta you can get something for five or six grand and um you know depend some years we have it really cold out here and there, but there's no snow so you got to drive you know four or five hours to Nippon or hudson bay or something like that where it's a lot better um but again i'm just i'm a I'm not an outdoors guy, but I just want to keep trying to spend more time outside and, you know, that type of thing and something like the glamping resorts. That's what I think allows someone to do that. Oh, all right. Yeah. So one thing you didn't mention, but I'm just, I'm just curious about what I want to talk about because you, you owned your own restaurant, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I want to hear more about that. What, what was the restaurant? Well, Cause you, you actually made a big switch because you went from being basically in the food service industry to being a real estate agent, mortgage yeah. broker sort of thing. So I think it's a process of elimination um, when you're doing things in life that will earn you an income because we all have to do that. We all have to earn an income. And I think you gradually try to find a way to do that that you enjoy and I don't think coming out of the gate, you can know what that is until you experience quite a few different things. So I, one of my first business endeavors um, was a restaurant and it was, it was the biggest learning experience of my lifetime. Um, just to know that you got to have a plan if you want to accomplish something. And I think for that restaurant, we, we, we tried really hard. Um, but we didn't have systems in place and maybe I wasn't even old enough to have the discipline that I needed to, to do things properly. So, um, and I also know that I probably don't want to own a restaurant again because, um, it's a lot of work and I was really hoping you would jump on the one when we open up at the resort, hopefully we don't yeah. know if we're going to do it yet, but I was thinking, yeah. just kidding. So <laughs> I would, I would give my advice to that yeah. and, uh, and that would be the end of it. <laughs> mm. well. Yeah. But yeah, it's, and I've, I've done construction and I've done a lot of things, but um, the real estate part of it is to me been by far the most enjoyable. So this is the one that I'm, I'll be doing for quite some time. Yeah. Okay. Right on. So um, I guess because you started a restaurant, like you still passionate about food, you like food. Oh yeah. Food? I cook, I cook all the time at yep. home. Like I, every opportunity. And I guess that's another part of, um, the camping is you, you know, you're not going to restaurants when you're camping. So you're cooking breakfast, you're cooking supper. What is your go-to meal? Let's go breakfast, breakfast. lunch, supper. Oh, just, yeah. I, I love just traditional breakfast, homemade hash browns, you know, some good scrambled eggs with cheese or over easy eggs, you know, bacon, sausage, um, you know, beans. If you're camping, I like to do that. And then you, you uh, prepare a good, yeah, actually, you know what? It used to always be steaks and stuff like that, but I think we've been getting a little more creative. Um, my my girlfriend's mom, she'll do a paella in a big pan, you know, where you have the rice and the and the shrimp and the sausage. Is a paella is that kind of like a melon? Well, or is I, it... I might, I actually might have have pronounced it wrong. Um, it's like a it's a Brazilian rice dish, okay. so I don't know. It, 
if I if you can think of what that is. I but can't. But you I'm, have I'm, rice and you have it's like a, almost like a a jambalaya. Okay, I know what jambalaya but is. Anyway, getting creative with the the food while you're camping, I think that's a big one for sure. Right yeah. Okay, so you're a real estate agent, you're a mortgage broker, you do sales for glamping resorts, you're sales manager. I mean, when do you find time to sleep? <laughs> like, I mean, as far as time management oh, goes, how do you manage I, all this stuff? You're I a busy get, guy. I get my nine hours every night. Don't don't fool yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, so earlier, I guess it would be in about a month ago, uh, yourself, Cam, you guys basically came up with or started implementing this uh, new, um, no, sir, I'm looking for financing for the lots yes um do you want to speak to that a little because it's pretty interesting it's basically it's a good way for people to get in at yeah so buying bare land um it it takes quite a bit of a down payment you need traditionally 35 percent down and that's quite a bit of money so we we don't think that that's a terrible option um it's just, it just can be more difficult sometimes to come up with that down payment. So we sought out options or alternatives where uh, somebody could could borrow money from another person. Um, that other person could be an RSP holder or just a person with capital, and they might want to lend that money out. And then we have a middleman facilitator who does all the administration and the paperwork and makes it legal and makes it safe so that one person borrows another person's money and there's a facilitator that allows that same money to continue being an RRSP and it's called self-directed RRSPs and it allows um, the investor to keep their RRSP, uh, get a better rate of return on it, have their money invested in Saskatchewan real estate. And then on the other side, it allows people who want to buy property and namely lakefront or lakeview property. Um, it's easier for them to own because they can do it with 10% down. As so, opposed to, what's it usually? 35%, right? Yeah, so, so that's quite a bit. You know, 50 on a, on a $49,000 lot, which is the average price of our RV lots, um, you know, you're going to be able to do that with, five thousand dollars down which is a lot better than seventeen thousand dollars down yeah and we actually so we're lucky we have you here because i would have to be explaining this stuff or we'd put more on cam but like i'm as far as explaining the uh financial side of things yeah i'm not that's why i'm on marketing over here yeah i'm like <laughs> pictures only that's numbers right. not so great yeah but yeah we, d we did do um Speaking of uh, marketing your end, I mean, you did some great acting skills. We actually did a commercial for that uh, offer, which you nailed, by the way. Yep. So, <laughs> so even on a podcast, you've been in a commercial. Yeah. Look at you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that comfortable sitting behind a camera, but. Hey, you're doing great. <laughs> you could have fooled me with a commercial, especially. Yeah. You, it only took like what? I think the first take was like. We did like six takes for the first yeah. scene, and then after that, you're just it was I like do, one and done. I do better if I don't think about it too much and just just get rolling, just let it happen. Yeah, hey, right on. Yeah. Okay, so how long have you been a real estate agent for? And have you been like a doing the mortgage broker stuff? Yeah, as well so that's at the same the, time. The mortgage part has been the longest part. Yeah. It's been ten years for sure, and then the real estate I added to that uh, a couple of years ago. Um, they just went hand in hand and. I really do, I find real estate a bit of a, a, a hobby just to, to know about it and to learn about it. And, um, you know, homes are interesting. And um, the people that I've helped for mortgages, it's it was easy to also be able to help them find a place or sell their house. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an easy transition. And dealing with people in that capacity is pretty much enjoyable um, all the time. It's, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have too many issues there, but um, here's something. a really good feel. So my mother, she is a real estate agent, and I hear she says that there's no better feeling than finding someone a home. Do you agree with that? Yeah, like you, you know, you you meet somebody you don't know them at all, and then they're going through a process that is very 
it's very emotional to them. They're very excited. And if you could just be the person that, that um, makes that easier for them and, and really tries to find whatever is they need and just be available for them um, at the end of that, they're happy and you're really happy. And you know, it's, it's a, it's a little bit cliche sometimes, but it is, it's very rewarding and you don't even go into it expecting that. But after the interaction happens, it's, it's unavoidable. You've, you know, you may not be the best of friends, but you do make friends and you make, you form relationships and it's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. So just curious on the side of, I guess, the, the financing offer that we have, have you, is it, is it a common thing that you've seen um, in other deals? Is it unique to us or have you seen other places? Yeah, I guess is my question. self-directed RSPs are extremely common. Yep. They, they happen all the time. Um, but there's a huge, huge sector of people that have never done it. Um, so it's just one of those things that people aren't totally aware about, but it happens all the time and it's a totally safe way to invest money or to borrow money. Um, and I think more people should, should be considering it just because, um, I would say a large, large share of people have RSPs and they just let them sit in a fund and they don't really make all that much money in terms of the return on the interest rate. So, cause it's usually like what? 2%. Yeah. Somewhere in there, maybe two per, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not big. It's usually something that, you know, it defers your taxes, right? That's the main reason people do it. So, you know, you don't pay tax on that money until you're 65 or whenever you want to take it out and you take it out when you're making way less money, right? So you're, you're not pulling the same income. Um, so you so move down a tax bracket. Yeah. So having one, I don't have to explain RSPs, but, um, I'm just saying that people should take a little more time to, um, use the tools that are there for them, which is self-directing them. And you can do it in a safe way and you can make 8% on your money as opposed to two yeah, and a half percent. Two. Right. So yeah. I do know that. So I'm not good at numbers, but I know eight's better than two. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and just like that, like, it's already been a half hour. Yeah. So that actually went by quick. And I already ripped through the list of questions. Did you have anything else you want to tell the listeners out there? No, that's that's good. I have I can't believe it lasted that long. Yeah, it's, it goes quick. <laughs> it's funny when you get talking, especially on podcasts, you just yeah. have a conversation. All of a sudden, time just it flies. Yeah. Yeah, we're regular Joe Rogan team over here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> 22 Fresh should be sponsoring this. We're both wearing, this wasn't on purpose, but we're both wearing yeah. 22 Fresh sweaters. <laughs> yeah, 22 Fresh. <laughs> yes. Maybe they can be the next sponsors at the start of the episode. Yeah. We would appreciate that. So last question, I guess I'm just thinking, so next summer you'll be out at the resort with a spot and everything. Looking forward to that. Cause it's going to be, I mean, when I started this job, it's kind of like, uh, it's work, but it's also not really work. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. Are you looking forward to that yeah, kind of same? I'm going to, I'm going to have a camper out there and I'm going to spend, you know, my weekends and I'll be enjoying them, but I'll also be there to just answer questions for people in a formal or an informal way. Um, you know, it's people, people want information and it's nice to, to email people that information, but I think it's better to be able to sit and have a beer with them and answer their questions and make them feel comfortable and get them into our property. That's and what I, I think having do. a beer with them is better for both parties too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> right on Josh. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you very much. This has been season one, episode two yep. with Josh Reese. So, uh, you folks out there, if you're interested at all, get a hold of Josh. You can visit glampingresorts.com or your phone number one more time. Uh, 306-209-7483. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And just like that, we are going to roll the outro. See ya. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for yet another episode, episode two of the Glamping Resorts Live podcast, which is brought to you by glamping resorts are you looking to start your own glamping resorts need a hand well we can help you visit us at glampingresorts.com now say do you want a campground but you're wanting some glamping structures to add to said campground well guess what it can increase occupancy rates and the overall appeal of your campground so check them out glampingresorts.com
com. Next up is Element Construction. Now, we couldn't have done this episode or our resort without these guys. They built the domes, they built the tents, they built the walking trails, and they built the playground. Yes, that's right. These guys rock. They're reliable. They do great work. Visit them at elementconstruction.ca. A. And I mean, they're the type of guys you don't have to go back three, four, five years down the road and fix stuff that you shouldn't have to worry about fixing. They rock. Visit them at elementconstruction.ca. Next up is North Shore Resorts. Yes, that's right. That is our resort off Buffalo Pound Lake. We got Lakeview lots. We got lake front lots. We got leases. We got the glamping structures. We got the tents. Come check us out. Oh, we have some wonderful financing options available. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention in the intro, we also have $500 off your seasonal site lease up until the end of November of 2019. I believe there's 30 days this month in November, so you're running out of time. Looking to go camping next year and get a seasonal site lease? Well, save some money today. Contact us. Visit glampingresorts.com and reach out. I mean, you can do it on our Facebook. You can do it on our Instagram. You can do it anywhere. That is Glamping Resorts related. We will hook you up. We also have gift cards available for those of you who are interested. Christmas is coming up, and it is a wonderful gift. Give the gift of glamping. They come in 50 all the way up to, I think it's 1,000 or 2,000. It's a large amount increments if you're feeling very generous. You can find those at glampingresorts.com as well. Thank you, folks, for joining us for yet another episode once again we will see you next week peace